Welcome to the start of chapter 3. This is lesson 3.1. Um, we're just going to go over some grade 10 factoring in this lesson. So first thing we want to do here is expand, which is of course the opposite of factoring. We're going to expand and kind of have a look at it first. So we got x times x is x squared, x times 5, 5x, 3 times x, 3x, and 3 times 5, 15. Collect like terms, x squared plus 8x plus 15. And notice to get the 8 from the 3 and the 5, we need to add. And to get the 15 from the 3 and 5, we need to multiply. So if we're going to expand this in one step, we go x squared, 9 plus 1 is plus 10x. 9 times 1 is plus 9. And remember, factoring is breaking things down into things multiplied together. So in this case, we're going to do the exact opposite of what we were doing up at the top of the page. So in this case, we're going to have two question mark numbers. They're going to have to add to 10 and multiply to 21. So in this case, we're going to have plus 3 and plus 7. Expand it, so I'll have x times x is x squared. Ugh is terrible. x squared plus 7x plus 3x plus 21 or x squared plus 10x plus 21. So there we go. That's exactly the same as what we started with. So x plus 3 times x plus 7 is the factored form of x squared plus 10x plus 21. Okay, in number 7 we're going to need two numbers that add to negative 2 and multiply to negative 15. In this case we'll have x minus 5 times x plus 3. And again if we were to multiply that out we would get back to what we started with. Okay, in number 8 um, we should notice that all of these coefficients are uh, divisible by 2. So I can pull a 2 out of here first so I get 2 brackets x squared minus 36x plus 72 and now I need two numbers that add to negative 36 and multiply to 72. Um, if you have a hard time finding that I recommend looking at all the numbers that multiply to 72. So I might have 1 times 72, 2 times 36, Five doesn't work. And notice that if I kept going, I'd just end up with nine times eight, which we already have. Okay. And if I want to get 36 or 18, I'm going to have to use six and 12. So I'm going to end up with two times x minus six times x minus 12. And again, notice if I were to multiply all of that through, I would end up with this in the beginning. What if this, which is what I had in the beginning. Okay, um, number 11. Number 11 is called difference of squares. And this guy is going to be x plus 4 times x minus 4. Because 16 is 4 squared, and of course x squared is x squared. Notice that if I multiply this out, I get x squared plus 4x minus 4x minus 16 and those guys are going to go to 0 so I end up with my original x squared minus 16. Okay, number 12 is exactly the same as 11. Notice that 9x squared is the th same as 3x all squared and 4y squared is the same as 2y all squared. There we go. Okay, number 13. 13 we need to factor by decomposition. So we need two numbers that add to 1 because I have a 1x here and multiply to negative 30. We get the negative 30 by multiplying 2 and negative 15. Okay, and those numbers are going to be 6 and negative, uh, not 7, negative 5. So I end up with 2x squared plus 6x. Wow, that is all really messy. Let's try that again. 
2x squared plus 6x minus 5x minus 15. And now we have to factor these one group at a time. Make sure you do not put brackets on your groups. Okay, so there's our first group. I can factor 2x out of that. And I get x minus 3 left. And now whatever I factor out of the second group, I should have x minus 3 left in the brackets. So I'm going to factor out a negative 5. And now if I draw big brackets around that, I've got x minus 3 in both of those. So I'll go x minus 3 comes out, and then left inside the big red brackets, I have 2x minus 5. And you don't need the red brackets on that one, but it just I just use them to illustrate how it works. Okay, number 14. We're going to need two numbers that add to 12 and multiply to, oops, and multiply to 36. I get the 36 from 4 times 9. Okay, and that's going to be 6 and 6. So I get 4x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 9. Um, anytime I have a leading coefficient here, it's a good idea to throw the legs on here just to remind yourself that you're not throwing it straight into a set of brackets. Okay, so in this case we'll look at each group. So this guy I can factor out a 2x, and I get 2x plus 3 left. And this guy I can factor out a 3, and I'm left with 2x plus 3. So I throw on my big brackets. And I can pull a 2x plus 3 out of that. And inside my big brackets, I'm left with 2x plus 3. So another way I could write this, because it's 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3, is 2x plus 3 squared. OK, um, 15 looks a little scary at first, but we can make it look a lot more familiar by introducing a new variable z, and just saying that z equals x plus 3. Now I've got z squared minus 6z minus 16. And I just need two numbers that add to negative 6 and multiply to negative 16. So that leaves me with z minus 8 times z plus 2. And now because our original had x's in it, we're just going to switch it back. So instead of z in here, I'm going to write x plus 3 in brackets. Okay, And now I can just clean those up a little bit. So x plus 3 minus 8 is x minus 5. And x plus 3 plus 2 is x plus 5. Okay, and 16 now. Again, I can just introduce a variable. I'm going to call it y this time, partially just to show everyone that it doesn't matter what we call it. And I say y equals 3x minus 4. So I end up with 6y squared minus 21y plus 15. First thing I can do is take out a common factor of 3. So that's going to give me 3, 2y squared minus 7y plus 5. And I'm going to throw legs on there to remind myself not to put it straight into brackets. And I'm going to need two numbers that add to negative 7 and multiply to 10. 10 comes from 2 times 5. So that's going to leave me with 2y squared minus 5y minus 2y plus 5. Let's do a big bracket there. So I can only factor a y out of that. And now I need to factor out a negative 1 so that I get 2y minus 5 inside the brackets in my second group. And now I can pull out a 2y minus 5 out of both of those. It'll go outside with the 3. And left inside the big brackets, I'll have y minus 1. 
And now, because I had x's in my original question, I need to get my x's back in there. Multiply that 2 through. And negative 4 and negative 1 over here is minus 5. And just a little more cleaning up. Negative 8 and negative 5 is negative 13. And there's our factored form. I can't break that into any more things multiplied together. Okay, this guy I've got two kind of chunks squared, so I'll introduce two variables. So let's say y equals 2x minus 1, and z equals, oh, sorry, I can't use y. y is already used. Let's use a and b. a equals 2x minus 1. and b equals y plus 4. There we go, so that leaves me with a squared minus b squared, which factored is a plus b times a minus b. And now let's fire all our other stuff back in. Notice every time we sub in has to be in brackets. So this first guy, I'm going to have 2x plus y plus 3. And my second guy here, I'm going to have to multiply this negative through first. And then clean them up. Minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5. All done. Okay, and same thing on 18. I'll say a equals x plus 2, and b equals 2y minus 3. So I get 32a squared minus 18b squared. And notice I can factor a 2 out of both of those. And that's a relief, because now I've got perfect squares with 16 and 9. And that's as far as I can go with the A's and B's, and so I'll stick my X's and Y's back in. Okay, and now I need to multiply all of these guys in. And just clean them up. Eight and negative nine is negative one. And 8 plus 9 is 17. There we go. That's fully factored. I can't break that into any more things multiplied together.